If you're contemplating on whether to purchase the new Logitech G Pro X Superlight, there's probably a few questions you want answered. Do the larger skates on the bottom of the mouse make a difference? Should you upgrade from the G Pro Wireless? I'm Psionic Kevin, and I will be sharing my experience with this mouse from the last month and a half of using it as my daily driver. If you're familiar with the G Pro Wireless, the Superlight is essentially just the same thing with a few things removed or changed. First of all, it uses the same hero sensor as the G Pro Wireless, but it has removed the DPI button from the bottom, as well as the side buttons on the right. There's also a noticeable weight difference with it being reduced from 80 grams on the G Pro Wireless to 63 grams. Unfortunately, this makes the mouse non-ambidextrous because left-hand users will no longer have thumb buttons. As my daily driver, the things that I used my Superlight for were mainly gaming, video editing, and my day-to-day -day work. From my first few times using it, there was a noticeable weight difference, especially since it's a 63 gram mouse versus the previous 80 gram G Pro Wireless that I've used from mid 2018 when it first released. As far as game testing goes, I use both Apex Legends and Valorant because I think they both do a good job of encompassing two different styles of aim. One mainly focused on tracking, whereas the other one more on snapping and flicking. Now I want to preface this review with two things. First of all, this video is not sponsored by Logitech. And second of all, I really like this mouse. The Superlight comes in two color variants, white and black. I personally opted for the white finish because I thought it looked really clean. And I also wanted to change things up since all of the previous mice that I've used have all been black. With that said, the surface does get dirty very quickly and you'll start to notice like specks of dirt here and there from just normal day-to-day -day use. And so if that kind of thing bothers you a lot and you can't stand it, then opting for the black finish might be a better idea. The combination of the large skate on the top of the mouse and the puck as well helps with glide and overall skate wear down. This definitely is a huge improvement over the G Pro Wireless in this sense because for me, I'm a low sense gamer. And so this means whenever I swipe, I make these huge wide motions on my pad, which will wear down OEM pads really quickly. I've seen the skates off of my G Pro Wireless twice already, and that's within the two years that I've used it. Now, a small heads up for those of you guys who are using the Superlight in the future, please, when you remove the puck, make sure that if you are using the puck with the skate on it, to not have your nails push onto the skate itself. I made a very small indent on the bottom of mine because I wasn't careful with it on the first time that I was swapping it out. And uh, it's not a huge dent, but it's just something that you wanna keep in mind. I didn't have any issues with the mouse wheel and that's probably because it's a new one, which is expected, but it definitely solves a problem for me because I was having mouse wheel hops consistently on the G Pro Wireless from hard flakes. I do charge the Superlight roughly once a week around the 40 to 80% range. And uh, occasionally I do let it drain and fully charge just to keep the battery healthy. And something that you do want to take note of is that the thumb buttons on the G Pro Wireless used to be removable, but on the Superlight, they don't seem to be. Now getting right to the point, is the Superlight worth the buy? Currently the Superlight goes for 150, but they're out of stock right now. And the G Pro Wireless is roughly around 120 to 125. I would say if you're an FPS gamer and you really like the G Pro Wireless shape, but you also want a lighter weight, then definitely go for it. It is a little pricey at 150, but that's how much the G Pro Wireless costed at launch in mid 2018. So it kind of makes sense. If all you care about is weight and wireless, there's probably other options that I personally haven't explored, but I do know if you don't like the look and feel of the honeycomb shell on other mice, 
then the super light is a good option for you. I have forced myself to try to use a wired mouse with a mouse bungee every now and then, but it just doesn't feel the same as wireless. And because of that, I will continue to use the Logitech G Pro X Super Light as my daily driver. The Super Light has pretty much everything I loved about the G Pro Wireless, but also with the weight reduction, larger skates, and better overall longevity. And because of that, it's a win for me. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it. If you've made it to the end, I'm Sonic Kevin. You can follow me on Twitch and my social media links down below. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.